Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we have Rodrigo bringing his Tavesh Kodama Turbo Hulk list. Bal put together a CZ list of his own, based off of the list from the database. Elder built a Valky combo list and David brought Sick Robots Cody once again to test his luck. Rodrigo mulligan down to 6, finding a single Havenwood battleground, but accompanied with an Elvis Spirit Guide into an Elves of Deep Shadow for a good turn 1 start. Deathrite Shaman and Bloom Tender for the help mana wise, while Sylvan Library will get him his necessary draws to refuel. He sent Mausoleum Secrets to the bottom. Bal kept his first 7 with the Wooded Foothills and Polluted Delta for lands, Lotus Petal, Arcane Signet, and Birds of Paradise for ramp, and Draneth Magistrate to hopefully gain some ground over Cody. The Fairy Time Reveler is usually only used during a combo turn. Elder kept his first 7 with a single swamp but paired with a dark ritual for a turn 1 Nashi, and hoping to find fuel from there. Prismatic lands for ramp, since he's divining top for card selection, which caught Talisman to pivot his game plan and Jessica's will for early value on a Valky God of Lies board. Finally, David also found a decent starting hand, with a flooded strand and wooded foothills for lands, alongside a soul ring allowing for a turn 2 Cody. You wouldn't want anything slower than that. Dockside Exogenous for further ramp in case his opponents dump some early juice. Sacrifice helps removing Cody in order to cast Thoracle or Breach. Cabal Ritual for even more mana and Autumn's Veil not only for protection but for the possible starting spell cast from a Cody activation. Ready for this match? Rodrigo starts the game with a tapped Avonwood Battleground, but he's not passing just yet, as he exiles an Elvis Spirit Guide to cast an Elves of Deep Shadow. Ball starts things with a Lotus Petal and plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it for a Tropical Island and casting a Turn 1 Drenith Magistrate, respecting Cody's potential over any of his other ramp. Elder cries about it as his old plan gets shattered, regardless he goes for it, playing a Swamp and casting a Dark Ritual, to be able to cast Nashi Turn 1, hoping to find some removal. David plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for an Underground Sea, he casts a Sol Ring and passes. Rodrigo draws and casts a Mana Crypt, achieving 5 possible mana, but not only does Drenage stop him from casting Tavesh, he's also missing land drops, so he just casts Bloom Tender and follows it with a Deathrite Shaman for extra mana, ending his turn. Val plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Tundra. Arcane Signet is a possibility, but he just top decked a Lavinia Azorius Renegade, which would hopefully slow his opponents even more. He attacks the Vid for 1 damage and passes. Elder fails to find another land. He attacks the Vid as he has no blockers, in order to trigger Nashi, hoping to find lands on top since he can't play anything else. He finds none, so he sadly passes. The Vid plays a Wooded Foothills and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. A bit tight on colored mana, he does cast his Dockside Exogenist, even if it only creates one treasure, finishing his turn. Rodrigo taps and wins his crit roll. Fourth draw and no lands to be found. He casts an Arbor Elf and passes, sadly unable to cast his Sylvan Library. Val top decks a Mana Crypt, which he casts right away, following it with his Arcane Signet, which was shielding in his hand since the start. He then casts his commander, sees a Weatherlight Captain, and proceeds to combat, attacking Elder for 3 as he can also abuse his life if the game drags on. Elder is on the same boat as Rodrigo, a sea with no land in the horizon, so he sends Nashi at David, who does block, removing any potential from Nashi. In the second main phase, Elder casts Sensei's Divining Top, hoping to help him filter to his lands. David draws and plays a Crystal Vein, ending the turn. In his end step, Rodrigo activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling David's Dockside, gaining 2 life. Rodrigo once again manages to win this script roll. He found his land, a Lenore Wastes, which finally allows him to cast his Sylvan Library, hoping to dig for some fuel. We're on Ball's turn and he also wins his crypt roll. He draws and casts an Eternal Witness, which upon entering he targets Lotus Petal, since any land could be removed by the Rodrigo's Deathrite Shaman. He casts the Petal and goes to combat, attacking Rodrigo for 5 with Cize and Drenith, both of which he blocks. On his second main phase he ponders his options and ends up casting his Birds of Paradise, to get a reusable source of colored mana. In Elder's upkeep, he activates his top, looking for lands. He still finds none, so he sets it up to attack the Vid with Nashi, triggering Nashi but still finding no lands from his opponents, so he sadly passes. The Vid gets to his turn and casts a Gamble, searching up for a claim the first board, hoping to deal with Drenith Magistrate. He randomly discards a Gitaxin probe, and this is the reason behind that early Dockside cast, as he now has double red mana, casting the Claim the Firstborn on Drenith with the treasure, and follows it with a Sacrifice, sacrificing the Drenith as an additional cost, and with that mana he casts his commander Cody Vociferous Codex, passing afterwards. In the end step, Rodrigo activates his Death Rite, exiling Bal's Drenith, gaining 2 life and proceeding to his turn. He is once again on the favorable side of the die, taking no damage from the Crypt. He draws 2 extra cards from the library, paying 8 life. With Drenith out of the way, he casts his commander, Kodama of the East Tree. After that, he casts a Collector Oof, making David and Elder want to scoop up this game. Elder responds by drawing the top card with his Senses top, 
and then Kodama triggers and Rodrigo puts a Wish Cloud Talisman into play with it, ending his turn. Balan taps and takes 3 from the crypt. He draws. <laughs> he thinks for a moment and does cast his Dockside Extortionist, as he has removal for Oof in hand and could attempt to win in the next turn. We're back to Elder and he simply casts the Sensei's Top and proceeds to clean up, discarding a Chaos Warp. David mimics Elder in the Draw Go plan, without further things to do. Rodrigo finally loses his crit roll, library triggers and he keeps up all cards again, paying 8 life. He plays a forest, triggering Kodama and puts a nurturing pitland into play, but he's still missing one land in play to win due to Lavinia's restriction, so he just passes. Bal rolls and loses the crit roll. He goes ahead casting Teferi Time Reveler, however David responds straight away with a force of negation, since he wouldn't be able to interfere anymore otherwise. Bal then casts a Mox Ember and attacks Elder with Cize before passing. Elder gets to his turn and instantly goes to combat, attacking Baal with Nashi who doesn't block. He finally found some lands, so he plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Badlands. He then casts a Mana Vault and follows it with a Ragavan, ending his turn. David draws and is forced to play his Bozejo, which he had in hand for some time now, since the deck is not on Taiga. In the end step, Rodrigo casts a Whirly Tutor and searches for a Visser Seer, which is the last piece in the puzzle. He still activates his Deathrite Shaman, exiling his own Arbor Elf for two more life. He untaps and his script is ever forgiving. He pays 4 life to keep only one extra card from the library. He casts Wild Growth on his forest, triggering Kodama and putting Vicious Seer into play. He then casts a Pattern of Rebirth on his Bloom Tender and it resolves, so he activates the Vicious Seer, sacrificing the Bloom Tender, triggering Pattern of Rebirth and searching for a Protein Hulk into play, which he sacrifices with the Vicious Seer in response, triggering it and searching for a Carrion Feeder, Melira Silvok Outcast, Disciple of the Vault and Lesser Masticar with which he is now able to sacrifice Lester Masticar with one of his sack outlets, triggering Disciple of the Vault to ping an opponent, and triggering Persist, returning the Massacre to play with a minus one minus one counter, but since he controls Melira, the Massacre cannot receive the minus one minus one counter, and we're back at the same scenario, where he can repeat this sacrificing loop and kill all his opponents to death. GG. Since this was a fairly short match, we decided to play another one. This time, David is going first. He mulliganed once and found a really fast hand, with a Badlands and Bustling Mire for lands, Jeweled Lotus for a turn 1 Cody and then he still has a Mana Vault and Simeon Spirit Guide for ramp, as well as Sculling the Weak and Jessica's Will to maybe finish the deal. Rodrigo mulliganed once and found a Swamp and Underground Stadium for lands, with a Sol Ring for ramp as well as Finorn Elves. Collector Oof found its way back and he also has Reanimate and Village Rights to find ways to navigate the match. Baal had to mulligan down to 6 this time, finding a Mana Confluence, Exotic Orchard and Ottawara Soaring City for lands. Mystic Remora and Sylvan Library for card draw and Karn is an asymmetrical Null Rod effect. He sent the Card of Calling to the bottom. Finally, Elder is now hoping to play Magic and he mulligan once, finding a decent hand of Badlands and Marsh Flats for lands, allowing for a Mox Diamond and Chrome Mox for ramp on turn 1. He then has two Lilianas to hopefully slowly control the table and his opponent's hands. Mayhem Devil is mostly a control and combo piece. Ready for round 2? The V starts the game with a Bloodstain Mire, cracking it for an Underground Sea. He then exiles his Simeon Spirit Guide for red mana to cast his Mana Vault. He then casts Jeweled Lotus, cracking it for his commander, Cody, and passing the turn quite set up. Rodrigo plays an Underground Stadium and casts a Finorn Elves, passing the turn. Bal plays an Exotic Orchard and casts a Mystic Remora, passing the turn. Elder plays a Badlands and casts a Chromox into the Remora since Cody could right away steal the game, and Elder can just sit and wait. He imprints the Ball's Trickery to the table's surprise. He then casts a Mox Diamond, triggering the fish and unable to pay, and discards a Marsh Flats. With his 3 mana, he casts Lillian of the Veil, triggering the fish once again, but all seems forgiven as he down ticks her right away, stealing David's turn to win from him. David draws, plays a Badlands and passes the turn. Rodrigo plays a Swamp and casts his Collector Oof, slowing down Elder as well as David's game plan. He then attacks Elder directly, being more than happy to let Liliana leave for now, and passes. Balan taps and lets the fish go, having done a good job. He plays a Forbidden Orchard and gives David a Spirit, despite him and Rodrigo benefiting from it. David will most likely want Liliana to go, and Rodrigo has shown he doesn't care much as he has a Reanimate in hand and can discard into it. Bal casts a Sylvan Library and passes. Elder has found himself once again in the Landless Sea. He upticks Liliana and everyone discards a card, and he ends his turn. David draws, plays an Ancient Tomb and attacks Liliana with the Spirit. He then passes. Rodrigo gets to his turn and casts a Pritus Grasp, targeting Elder. 
He secretly searches for an in-tomb to pair with his reanimate and passes the turn. Ball draws and library triggers, but he keeps only one card in hand as he now plays a Skullin turn and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He then casts his Commander Cizay, providing the vid with another spirit, and then passes. Elder found a land, a Skullin Tarn, which he plays and cracks for an untapped Blood Crypt, paying 2 life. With it, he casts his Commander Valky, God of Lies, to hopefully steal some value creature, as well as provide information to the table on what's going on. Elder sadly finds not a single creature, but everyone gets to see each other's current game plan. Elder then uptakes Liliana and passes. David gets to his turn and attacks Liliana right away. Elder does block since Valky has no more business being around. In the second main phase, David plays an Arid Mesa and cracks it for a Tundra, ending his turn. Rodrigo plays a Forest and knowing about the Fluster Storm, he just goes to combat, attacking David and passing. Bal's library triggers and he keeps finding lands, so he keeps one extra card and plays a Marsh Flats. He then attacks Liliana directly and in the second main phase he cracks the Flats for a Savannah and passes. Elder draws and, still injured by the hoof, is forced to pass. David draws and wants mostly to send back at the moment, so he passes, and on his end step Rodrigo casts the Entomb he exiled from Elder's deck. However, Bal responds with an Opposition Agent, so he gets to search Rodrigo's deck and exiles something, and upon a closer look at his deck he exiles the Lesser Massacre, leaving Rodrigo's deck only capable of winning through Strain of Smog. With his plans foiled, Rodrigo gets to his turn and probes graveyards, and goes for the reanimate on Elder's Mayhem Devil. He then attacks Bal with the Oof because of the Tilden library and passes. Bal draws and pays 8 to keep 2 extra cards from the library. He plays a Manor Confluence and notices Rodrigo is really close to casting Tevesh, so he casts a Finale of Devastation X equals 2. David responds with his Fluster Storm, triggering Storm, and Bal responds with a Deflecting Swat, changing the target of the copy to the original spell. David does pay for his Fluster Storm spell not to be countered, forcing Bal to pay 1, and he does so, providing a Spirit to Elder. He finds Drenith Magistrate and passes the turn, without attacking since Culling the Weak could be used to trigger Mayhem Devil and create weird trades. Elder draws and is forced to pass once again. In the end step, however, David does cast his Culling the Weak, sacrificing his spirit and shows his last turn top deck, Ad Nauseam. Mayhem Devil triggers and Rodrigo pings David with it. It's probably his first Nauseam on camera, and it's quite a great one. Even without access to artifacts, he finds both pieces and proceeds to his turn. He draws, plays an exotic orchard and casts his Thassa's Oracle, entering and triggering. He holds priority and casts Demonic Consultation, naming Coalition Victory, which is strangely banned, so he exiles his old deck. And still in response to the trigger, Rodrigo casts his Village Right, sacrificing his Collector Oof and pinging David with the Devil. He also hopes Elder could intervene, but neither player has further answers, so David takes this one. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! Game 1 was greatly influenced by the turn 1 Drenith, paying respect to Cody, and Lavinia also slowed everyone down, since there was so much ramp but so few lands. Sylvan Library played a major role in both games, maintaining Rodrigo and Bal's hands full, but so did Collector Oof, which nullified most of the vid and Elder's keeps, and eventually Ad Nauseam sealed the deal, as the board had few creatures to pressure players. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Aajimo, Drunken House Cat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Zinan, our latest sack breaker. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!